Hello and welcome to the seventh and final installment of the Archan XP Architectural Online Courses. My name is Zoltan Todd, your host today. I'm the partner manager of Archan XP and a CAD and modeling enthusiast. So I'm going to show you not only how to use our products, but also the little tips and tricks I picked up along the way. So, you know, when you are designing something, you not only have to be effective, you have to be fast as well. So we are going to show you how to do things in a very short time but not compromising the result. Last time we looked at how to create rendered images from a two-story family house we all built together. And we discussed how to use the integrated rendering engine of Arch and XP to get a result like the one you see on the screen. However, today we are going to go one step further, meaning that we are going to get our design to move. And how does that, how does that sound actually? How does it sound to make your design look like this with human figures that are moving and with high quality textures and lights and elements and all kinds of different things on your floor plan. You see everything is moving in here. The, the, the leaves are going to be blown by the wind in the outside. People are moving, the candle lights is flickering. So it's all about movement. It's all about making your design more interesting while giving it movement and giving it high quality texture. So the question on our mind is actually, how do we get from here to there. So that is where we are going to start. And that is what we are going to discuss today uh, during our presentation on Arch and XP Live, which is an architectural visualization software. Instead of telling you what it is, I'm going to show you what it is because um, the whole point is to make this into this. So that's what we are doing to discuss. So Arch and XP Live, up until to what I have shown you before, uh, this is going to be a little bit different. So first of all, we have the model, right, that we created during the last couple of sessions. And we set up a few things in this model, which we all want to export. For example, we want to export the geometry and the views, perspectives, obviously, that we have set up. So we have a bunch of views here on the ground floor, on the first floor, several bedrooms, which are all furnished. We have a nice street, which are populated with, uh, with buildings and other stuff. We want to export that. So if we want to export this model into rendering engine, we want to make sure that this data is not lost. The other thing we want to export is the materials that we have set up. Remember last time we talked about rendering styles, render styles and material properties that we don't want to lose. We want to keep that. So we want to make sure that however we set up this model, this data is not going to be lost. Just a reminder, when we are placing render styles, we can uh, jump into this colored view, which shows you which areas and properties have a certain render style and which you haven't set up. This is just to show you that we already prepared this model with the correct styles, but we want to see the result in another program as well. So even if we export this, we want to make sure that the result is going to be there. Yeah, if I hover my mouse, I see that the, these have all been uh, given render styles. Another thing what we want to make sure that we don't lose is the shadows and the north direction. We want to make sure that the shadows are going to be on spot and the sunlight is going to be correct as well. So let me just navigate to an external view. Just a second. Let me go to the uh, perspectives. Find an outside view. That's right. Okay, shadows. Uh, we already discussed how to turn them on. I'm just going to go to this bar and turn on the shadows. And we know that the shadows look like that because the geolocation and the north sign, uh, north direction has been all set up like that. So that again is something that we want to export. Another thing that we don't want to lose is the animation path because we already created an animation around this building. Let me just show you what we created before. This kind of spline uh, holds an animation path. Let me just quickly play you this animation I did. I'm not a professional uh, cameraman, but I think this would do. So all these things we want to nicely nicely wrap up and export into Arch and XP Live, which is our real-time architectural visualization software. And that's what we are doing now. Uh, let me just turn off the shadows for now. We don't need them. And we are leaving Arch and behind and going into Live, which you can reach by the rendering Live button. The software tells you that it may, might take some time for the for the model to pass from one software to the other. And from this point onwards, we are going to work in live. Now, the reason why we made live in the first place is because we wanted to give you a tool with which you can create visuals in seconds, basically. Um, images that even at an early stage you can send to your clients. You, do, you might not want to spend too much time on these things. You want to have, you want to get results, right? In a short time. So even now with this point, you see that you, you end up with a model which if you look at the clouds carefully, you see that the clouds are moving. 
because Arshine Live is all about movement and high quality textures. Now, let's just investigate very quickly uh, what imported from Arch9. Uh, we talked about perspectives, which we have all here. So if I click on this jump list, you see the very same perspectives as we set up in Arch9. Nicely. So let's just, let's just browse through. Let's see what we have here. We have a couple of bedrooms, and we have a hallway, and lastly, we have an outdoor area. So that was, uh, that was one thing. If I click on this uh, folder icon, I see that these are already images. So if you want to send to your clients this early stage of your model, you can do that. You don't have to manually wait for rendering because these images are already done. But we are going to enhance them a little bit further. Let's uh, check out the, the sunlight. We see that the north direction has imported and the shadows are spot on. So you can find the best possible time uh, of the day if you want to show your model in the best possible light. Now, another thing that we have imported was the animation which we are pulling up now. So from, from this jump list, you can pull up the animation we have created. And if I click on play, you see the very same thing as you saw before, only this time it is done in Arch and XP Live. So this video doesn't have to be rendered at this point because we are going to enrich it. And let's just go back to the views, find the views that we are looking for and talk about materials because materials are again something that have all been um, given render styles and they are not lost. So if a particular piece is marked as a wall, then all the properties for the glass, for example, for the concrete, they are going to be stored in here. And there's one particular scenario which I want to show you, and that is with the moving surfaces. There's a quite a few of them. Water would be one example. If you have a water surface and you have set up the right render style for it, then it's going to be moving in life. And that's again something you cannot really do in a CAD software. For that, you need some kind of other visualization. Now, jumping back to where we started, uh, let's check out that lamp because lamp sources are, again, some things that have been grabbed from Archline. You can turn these lamps on and off just to show you that these things are coming from the modeling phase as well. Remember, we created this ceiling lamp quite a while ago. Um, and let's see how we emphasize things, how we modify them, because it's one thing to import uh, stuff, but how, you, how can you customize it? Let's... Um, Start with the, I think the patio would be fine. So if we just uh, we need to move right there, let me just navigate there. Navigation, by the way, works the same way. Um, shift key and the scroll button. I will show you that later on in detail. So let's pull up the details of this patio. And you can see that even though the material properties have been set up, you can fine tune that. So if you want to make your, your uh, surface a li little bit more brighter or rougher, bump mapping would be implemented and that's the way you do it. Now, you see over there a mistake. There's one piece of slab which doesn't have the right material. And that's fine because here in the, uh, in the object and material library, I can bring up those textures that came with the model. So if I now look up bright white, which is the texture of our walls, then I can just drag and drop it onto the problematic surfaces. Now, now the problem is solved. So that's just to show you that some way of design can be done in live as well. So if you want to change materials, that's exactly the time and place for that. Now let's proceed with the built-in materials of live. For that, we have quite a few examples. Let's start with the with grass. I'm not sure where to find it, so I'm just going to, I think, go to the search bar and type in grass. Um, it could be an environment, but just to be sure, I'm just going to type in grass, enter, and you find the right one. Drag it and drop it, and there you go. The texture is now changed. Let's go to the outside and see some few examples. So let's say I want to change the driveway to something much higher quality. This cobblestone would be nice. If I go closer, you see that this looks like a 3D surface. It's not, it's just a um, trick of, on the eye, but uh, it does look very high quality. So uh, if I want to cre create additional elements here, for example, I want to give um, an asphalt covering for the road, then just grab it drag and drop it and it's going to be black. Okay, another thing, uh, I have several instances of the same driveway. I don't want to change it one by one, so I'm just going to go with all instances, which overrides elements that I don't want to change. So I'm just going to switch off the all instances and make that particular slab a concrete covering. So yeah, that's, that's exactly the um, outcome I was looking for. This is stunning. So let's go to the, to the backyard. Okay, this is a good uh, way to show you the navigation tool, um, the, this paper airplane thingy, with which you are able to sort of fly around your model and find the things that you want to see. Um, it might happen that you want to access places 
which are not to be found on your views. But that's the way to do it. So here you go. Let's just go closer and continue working on this patio because there's a few things we have to figure out here. Namely, uh, the water surface is not not at all good. I want to change it to something else. So I'm just going to go to the water uh, library and change it to something else. Uh, maybe this is too rough, but you get the idea. Let's go with, uh, with a pool water like that. Oh, there you go. Much better now. Another thing I want to change is maybe the ladders uh, leading into this uh, pool. Remember we turned off the all instances mode, so here you have to turn it back on and then you end up with something like this. I want to change it back to Chrome. I think it's better that way. Perfect. So that's how you can enhance the materials with uh, content which is coming exactly from Live. So Live comes with an elaborate um, material library. Another thing that we might need to investigate is what happens if you if you want to create uh, your own materials. So you might want to want to see how to create something new. So you just click on this this button over here, creating a new folder, which I have to rename. But this is where I'm going to store my own things, new materials. There you go. It's going to be in alphabetical order. And here uh, I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to show you how to do it. So clicking on the plus icon you can create a new material based on a color or texture. So if you have an image, um, maybe a seamless texture, then you can do it that way. So you can just name it and set up the properties. I'm not going to do this because we don't need that, but I just wanted to make a very quick detour about this. Now, let's proceed with objects because the biggest problem with working in CAD is the number of surfaces will be very heavy on your design. So life doesn't really care about the number of surfaces. That's because of the different engine it uses. So if I want to create, let's say, a model of a car or human figures, then I can just do that just fine. So I'm just going to go to the object library and find a few, find a car. I think I have a very nice red roadster where I'm going to... Um... By the way, if you see jumping, that is because Archon XP Live is saving, uh, I think, every 20 paces. So if whenever you do 20 things, then Archon is going to save just stops for a very few, uh, just, just a few seconds. So dragging and dropping this high detail car, uh, this is not in the right place. So I need to transform these objects. Uh, by selecting the elements, you can transform them. Uh, but let me show you where you can actually find these elements. It's in the ribbon up there. So movement, rotation, and uh, scaling are the three things that we'll be using much more often. And using the one, two, three keys on your keyboard, you can toggle back and forth between these elements. So now number one moves the element, number two is just going to tilt it. And again, jumping back to number one, then I'm just, I can just push it downwards. Yeah, I think this is good. I could be spending more time on that, but you get the idea. Next thing what I have to add is human figures to make the scene more lifelike. And for that, we have a few, few people over here so Dennis is going to be walking towards the car but maybe I want to move him rotate him a little bit and there's another um, person I want to talk about and that is uh, that is going to be a moving uh, person let me just jump in and put down Sophia who is an animated uh, model she's going to start moving anytime soon yeah she's already moving there you go. Uh, she's a bit lonely here, so we might add somebody else over here. But let's just go outside for 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 now, because the next thing we want to add is some foliage, because Live is very good with uh, adding trees and plants and other kind of foliage. So let's dis let's discover that further. Uh, maybe on the driveway, and all this concrete is making me dizzy. So I'm just going to use one one tree. If you want to get how big these things are, there's the gray human figure next to it. So that gives you a context. Of, sorry, in terms of the size, so let me just grab the tree and place it over there. We made one copy, but with continuous placement, you can have more. So just like that, click, click, and it's done. Uh, with the backyard, I think I clicking some more, but it's always good to mix the elements. It's never good practice to use the same objects for all the time because it's going to look like it's made of clones. So I'm just going to um, going to mix them up a little bit. Uh, this is still a bit cumbersome for me. So if I want to, for example, paint a surface with foliage, uh, there's a tool for that too. So I'm just going to click on the this button over here and I can define with what I want to uh, brush, I want to paint the surface. I want to go with uh, small uh, bushes or a small grove. Yeah, you see that there are elements you can add to a palette like this, two kinds of uh, bushes, and then 
by clicking I can uh, just paint the surface with bushes and with this you get a much more realistic result because the elements are going to be uh, sort of mixed together uh, I want to increase the size of my paintbrush so I'm just going to do just that density could be uh, made higher as well but I don't want it to be a jungle actually so I just want to sparkle the things in just just randomize it a little bit and go with the uh, Eraser if you want to get rid of the elements that you have created. Maybe you have painted over concrete, for example, then this might come in handy. Grass would be a nice addition, just like that. Grass comes with thousands, if not millions of surfaces. So you can see with this that Archand doesn't really care about the number of surfaces. It just cares about getting the job done, to be, to be honest. So Small Grove is going to paint with trees and bushes, but these palettes you can customize and you can create your own. I like to jump in with a few larger trees, so that way the site is a bit more realistic. So let's get one there and another one on the corners. Uh, you don't want to hide what you want to want to show, obviously, but uh, these are very looking very good in the background. Maybe if you would import some rocks and other other things, uh, things would be even more realistic. Now let's uh, jump back into a view which we already know this this street view would be fine because there's one particular well let's. Should we call it an object? No, I think we should call it an effect. There are moving uh, sort of objects in Archline Live. Uh, one example would be fire. So let me just look for a fire effect and just dragging and dropping it. There you go. I think we should uh, make it a bit darker so that way we can see the result. There you go. So you have a nice campfire in your build next to your building, which makes it a bit more homely. I think this is a bit dark, so I'm just going to crank it up. Um, making it a bit more bright and after that I will show you how to import elements from Archline uh, because it might happen that while you are designing there's a new object uh, for, for example from the 3D warehouse which you want to import and we should talk about how to do that so we are going to jump back into Archline and find one element that we need I think this garden lamp that you see on the left hand side which by the way it came from the 3D warehouse uh, clicking on the cocoa wheel I can export this this particular object into live it's already done so I can jump back into live and uh, see what my result looks like let me just navigate back and if I now go to my object library just like that I should go to the imported objects uh, I think well I have two folders with the same name so let me just go back uh, there's one object which says imported objects and well that's not the one let's just exit it and go to the other and here we go we have the garden lamp uh, let's position it as a continuation of this uh, small wall over here which acts as the boundary of my property okay this is not good why is that not good there are no materials and the light source is not in the right place so I'm just going to go to the material library uh, add, a, add a glass surface to the lamp there you go and I think for the covering, some darkish metal covering would be better. So let me just find it in the right library. Uh, yeah, that would be good. One there and another one there. Uh, last thing I have to figure out is, is actually the light source is not at the right place. You see that it's pushed to the bottom. And, uh, and I have to move it upwards. Otherwise, it's not going to be good. Uh, okay, just... Well, how do we... How about we move it a little bit upwards with this? Yeah, there you go. So that way you can bring in elements from Archline. And uh, with this light settings, I'm going to talk about a bit further when we get to the inside. I think that's uh, what we should be doing next. Let's look at the lamps. I did show you before how to handle the lamps in Archline, but not in live. So let's go back to live, turn on the light editor. And you see that every single light source has a node, a marker next to it. If I click on it, I can access the lamp and I can turn things on and off. And also I can choose if I want this to be a helper light or real shadow casting light. Now the difference is in performance. So if you want to, all your lights to be shadow casters, then the result is much more lifelike, obviously, but it might take more processing power from your computer. The intensity I can decrease a bit, so it's not going to be burnt out. So this way you can fine tune your, your scenes. Now let's head back outside. And I think it's time now to update the visuals because my image now is in, in not in sync. 
but if I click on that icon over there, then I can update my visual. Let's just jump into the folder and see what we have here. That's right. So that's the end result, what we are looking for. That's what that now something I would be proud to send to my clients. The initial stage wasn't sure about that. Uh, another thing what we have to sort of get right is, well, by the way, here's where you can, um, almost forgot, where you can set up the resolution. So if you want to set up the resolution for the images that you are, that you are exporting, um, and uh, eventually with Archon XP Live, you can access the animation that I did before. But this time we are not go not only going to sort of access the animation what we did, this one, but we're also going to record another one. So let me just hit the play icon and see that is the animation I started with. Um, yeah, there you go. And now it's time to create an additional custom animation path. Let me just make it a bit longer because it was too short and too fast. So there you go, much better now. Yeah, so that is actually the, I think it is it is very good for my clients to, to get an idea of how my, uh, my project is going to look like. You can, you know, scrub along this path and you can add additional animations. If, you, if the paths are already recorded, then here you can, you can find them. But now it's time to get another animation. So all I have to do, define what I am, what I want to start from and where I want to end up. And by clicking on this, this icon, so this is where I'm starting my animation from. And it's, I'm going to move upwards and look down a bit. There you go. Let's tilt it and hit the plus icon. And now I have two keyframes between which the animation is going to be created. So this is going to be eight seconds long. So if I hit the play button, then it's a nice upward lifting movement with which I can show you how the model actually looks like. By the way, if you experience these jumps, on my end, they don't appear, but perhaps the streaming is something that is very heavy on my computer. Um, I'm going to push this together, these two animations as a sequence with a transition between them. So with Arch9 Live, you don't have to have an external uh, video manipulation software. You can just brush your videos together with a nice transition. So that was animation one and now animation two starts. So you can have multiple sequences and you end up with a very nice uh, outcome basically. So that is about animation. You can just click on that camera icon and then the video is going to be exported. And that is actually the end result what we are looking for. I just loaded up a new version of the project which is already finished with all these trees and cars and elements and everything is, is in movement and that would be candle lights and the lights are spot on. So you could be obviously spending more time on this, but the idea is to get visuals instantly. So you don't have to wait for rendering. You just have to grab these images as soon as you can. So that actually wraps up what I wanted to discuss with this project. And I think the end result is something worth mentioning. Let's just find a good view with which we can say goodbye to this model. And let, let's look at the results. So the results are the videos that we created before this show. And with that, I can demonstrate perfectly how Archline is creating videos. There you go. Um, just a few things to mention. Archline XP Live uh, is a rendering engine that we make. I did mention that Archline XP, the design software, is able to connect with third-party renderers. But the best connection is obviously done with our own engine, which is Archline XP Live, with which you can create these elements. Now, Live is unlike the unlike the um, design software. It's it's a graphics card, a GPU based rendering, and that's why it's so fast. That's why it's so high quality. Uh, meanwhile, I'm rolling you a few other videos showing you other projects that are being realized with Live. Uh, if you don't own Arshan XP, that's fine. You can use Live with other design softwares because Live is able to import OBJ and FBX files. So if you have files created in these file formats, then you can use them in Archon XP Live as well. The point is that we are open to other software solutions as well. That is actually what I wanted to discuss during this session. If you have any questions about, about uh, this, then, then I'm, I'm happy to answer. I see a few questions rolling in. Um, there was a question about the technology behind it, and uh, one of my attendees just answered that. Let me just read it out. Ocean XP Live is, is basically targeted for visualization and animation, and it uses the Unreal Engine 4. Now, if you're not familiar with Unreal Engine, it's just enough to say that the uh, in the gaming industry, when it comes to video games and, and uh, esports, the, the best, the A-list games are using this engine. So we're using the same engine as these guys, and that's why we can visualize so many surfaces. Now, 
let's just go back to the results. I just love how this turned out. Uh, another question. I want to see how the lights outside I may make render. Let's say, um, I don't understand this question about the lights. So if you want to uh, explain a bit further, then that would be, that would be a bit better for me. Okay, so this is where we started from and we ended up with this very nice video. So in just a few sessions during the seven, what I uh, did so far, I showed you how to create a building. So how to create a one story, then two story building with a roof, with some furnishing, with some external elements, surroundings. We already talked about how to create plot stamps, plot layouts, sections, elevations, we modified the materials and we added render styles to make the renderings better. Then we made some rendered images, uh, which actually happened last time. So let me just uh, pull up. So that was the rendering image that we ended up with. And eventually we made the whole thing into a moving, uh, stunning experience. I would like to thank you for your attention for these uh, seven sessions that you, that you were following me for. And uh, that actually uh, sort of, wraps up our investigation into the Arshan XP product line. Just a quick reminder, we talked about Arshan XP, the design software, and we talked about live, the visualization software. But that is not the end of our journey because we are going to have another session starting from the 16th of April, which is going to be all about, um, all about interior design. So for now, we looked at the external things, but now we're just going to jump in and I will show you how to create that. So how to create furnishing, uh, kitchen, cabinets, uh, tiling on the wall, tiling on the floors, uh, how to use, uh, how to use external elements like this carpet over here or this orange bowl, how to get the lights right, how to get the materials even better. So during the, the next few sessions, which are starting from the 16th of April. So next, uh, next, um, Thursday, uh, right after, after uh, Easter, we are going to investigate how to create that. So it's going to be an exciting stuff. So please, um, you know, stay with me for that. Another question. Uh, if we buy Arshan XP, Arshan 2020 today, is there a way to launch Arshan XP Live uh, 2019? Uh, well, yes. Yeah. So at the moment we have Arshan XP 2020. This software is the 2020 version. And the other, the uh, design or the rendering engine that I showed you, this one is still the Archon, X, Archon Live 2019. But if you buy it now, obviously you will get a free upgrade to 2020. Visit the website for further details on that one. In fact, it's very good that we actually mentioned that because I want to show you how, where you can find further details about Archon XP Live. So if you go to the website that we have, then uh, you can find additional details at arshanxp.com slash product slash arshanxp live. And here you can find more videos and more ideas about what live actually is, how it could be used for a bathroom project or a larger project like, the, like this hotel over here. And if you want to find useful videos for that, then either go to the video gallery where you can find tutorial stuff like the one I'm doing right now, or you can go to the to the uh, picture of the month to get inspired or the gallery and most important in the system requirements. So if you want to get some learning materials, then that's the way to do it. So archanxp.com slash product slash archanxp live is the way to go. Uh, and that is actually what I wanted to discuss today. Again, thank you very much for your attention. And as a farewell, let's just look at the very nice live videos that we have. We are so proud of this project. I can't show them enough. So thank you very much for your attention. See you next uh, Thursday.